Major League Baseball, I'm not sad to see you go, quite frankly. Uh, thankfully, we're talking about the NFL and college football here on the Morning Wager. Mark Zinno, if there is one thing that I learned from you over these past six months, these past six glorious months since the Morning Wager came into existence, uh, it's that Aaron Boone's not a very good manager. No, he's not. Um <laughs> Beyond his piss poor managing, uh, piss poor defense basically handed this series and the World Series to the Los Angeles Dodgers. What I watched, I'm still trying to contemplate. I'm still trying to figure out if what I saw last night was more embarrassing than what I witnessed in Game Seven of the 2004 ALCS at Yankee Stadium. Um, one of the most embarrassing losses this franchise has had in 100 plus years of baseball. It's Woo. it's. There's no getting around it. Nobody will live this down. Nobody should live this down. If George Steinbrenner was alive, today would be a bloodbath. They would clean house. They would Nothing would be left, and everything will be torn to shreds. George was an animal. Hal is a Sherman soft pillow and won't do anything. And Brian Cashman will be back, and Aaron Boone will be back, and Juan Soto will be in New York wearing a different uniform, playing for a different team, and we'll see at City Field in June. Because this organization now has become a joke compared to what it once was. Because anybody who watched this team play and saw that level of defense all season long and went into the postseason and went, we'll be okay. Eh, well, you're not going to be okay. Uh, yeah, I was a lot more angry last night. I don't have the energy to be upset about it this morning. Um, and on, to top it all off, the you know when I gave out on the show yesterday, Yankees first five money line, and when I said <laughs> if it's too juicy, lay the half a run. I don't think it's a bad deal. And I gave out the money line. In no world did I think that I would suffer probably the second worst bad beat of my life behind that Washington Wizards team total one hundred nine and a half. Was that last year? Yes. Last year that yes. I, I had suffered. Around this same time of year, it was about a year ago that that happened. Um, that was awful. That was disgusting. Uh, I feel sorry for anybody who tailed, uh, anybody who, although Jack Flaherty under 14 and a half outs, that, that one, I mean, you know, that wasn't officially a show play, but I did mention it and put it out there on social media. So I hope you guys took that one instead. But I don't have any answers for anybody. Um, that was a bad day for handicappers. It was a good day for public schmucks and, you know, whatever. I, well, I'm just glad it's over. I'm glad it's over at this point. I can't do it. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of bad days recently. Make no mistake about it. After one of the most incredible starts to a month I've ever had in October, the second half of October was a bloodbath. I'm picking up the pieces. Uh, we got one day. It is Halloween. Trick or treat, everybody. Uh, yes, that Yankees oh, yeah. inning last night. It's a lot more that, and a lot less treats. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Remind me again. Yeah. I think that Yankees happening last night was the worst happening of baseball I've seen since the infamous Bart man happening I, I, by the Cubs. I, the, the funny part is, is that I, 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 the kids and I, my, my boys and I, my twins oh. and I, we were watching the game, okay? And after four innings, we went upstairs to bed, and it was 5 oh, no. nothing, And I put the kids to sleep after four innings in a 5 nothing game. And I had to Daddy. explain this morning how the Yankees lost that game. And they kept saying, Dad, the Yankees lost? I said, yes. How? I said, I don't really have a good explanation. But, Dad, they were up 5 nothing. I know, son. I'm well aware. But, Dad, like, Garrett Cole was awesome. Yes, I know, son. I'm aware. Thank you. I, I, I Just inexplicable. Went to bed 5 nothing, and the kids wake up to a nightmare. Enough about the losers. Let's talk about some winners. Let's turn this thing back around today because we have two plays for you on Jets, Texans, player props, and then we've got a uh, team total for tonight's lone college football game. Uh, I, can I start? I'll, let me start, actually, with this. I feel sure. after you, you, you need to take a deep breath after that eloquent soliloquy you just delivered. I'm going to talk bad ones. So let's switch it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we, yeah, exactly. You got to change it up. All right. I'm talking Devontae Adams here. Anytime touchdown. Yes. Joe Ranieri, who was snickering before the show started. I do think tonight is going to be the night 
for Mr. Devontae Adams. He's played two games with the Jets so far. Obviously, has not gotten in the end zone. He has played 94% of the snaps. He's had red zone targets, three of them, in fact, in the two games. We know Rodgers is going to be looking for them when they get down, looking for Adams when he gets, the team gets down in the red area. Uh, Alan Lazard may not play this week, so that's another receiver that Rodgers won't look for in the red zone. But more than anything, more than the just-do factor, Mark Zinno, this Texans defense has given up the second-most touchdowns to opposing wide receivers in the league, 11 this year. I think Devontae Adams gets off the schneid tonight. Fine, gets a touchdown. Oh, by the way, obviously there is a lot. We, we have to address this. There's a lot of chatter, and there will, I'm sure, will continue to be on the pregame shows uh, leading up to kickoff about the Jets being favored here. This is only the seventh time since 1990, game nine or later, that a team with a 250 win percentage or less is favored over a team with a 750 win percentage or better. Would you like to guess what the favorite has done in those previous six situate, uh, instances? I actually told you the answer, so you should know. They're 6-0, and yes. They, they are 6-0, and and 4-0-2 oh, and two against the spread. So history shines on the Jets in that regard tonight. We shall see. I have a 4% best bet on the game. You are looking at the Texans quarterback, C.J. Stroud. I am, yeah. You know, um, well, I'm not going to get to the window on the side of the total. I'll, I'll play this game from a different angle. Um, and that angle simply is that the line is stinky to me, as you just mentioned. Um, and so there's something that kind of turns me off about this whole thing. However, um, I, I look at it and I go, yeah, you know what? Um, the Jets may have a better chance in this thing than I think a lot of the public is giving him credit for. That said, if the Jets are leading, I expect that uh, that that the the Texans, who are a throw happy team, will throw. But the Jets have a very good pass defense. In fact, second in the league in passing yards allowed. So I look at this and I go, well, if the Jets have a lead and they have to throw and he's not going to complete a lot, well, that means there'll probably be a lot of incompletions. Uh, and that's why I go look at the number of attempts at thirty one and a half here. C.J. Stroud has gone under thirty one attempts just once this year, and it's an outlier game overall. The game that the Texans played against the Packers, where they lost 24 to 22, was a very bad outlier game for CJ Stroud. He was 10 of 21 for 86 yards, no touchdowns in the game. So it was just a weird kind of game. Other than that, he's had at least 31 in every other game. His road attempts this year 32, 31, 31, and then the 21 at Green Bay, which we kind of look at as the outlier. When he's home, he throws a lot more than this. Um, but I suspect the fact that that the Jets may have the lead in the second half and that Stroud may be more inclined to throw. Um, even with the injuries in the secondary, uh, I, I still think that there is a, a possibility here where Stroud has to throw his team back into this game at some point. And if the Jets end up getting a big lead, you know, then guess what? The Texans are throwing. The only thing that really puts us in danger is if somehow the Texans get out to a, a two-score lead early in the game and they just want to run this thing into the ground. Uh, early and often. So let's go CJ Stroud over 31 and a half passing attempts. Just to recap, we gave you two props. Devontae Adams, anytime touchdown. CJ Stroud over his number of pass attempts. Smash that like button if you're in agreement with us. Comment down below if you agree with one of us, disagree with the other. Comment down below if you disagree with both of us. Comment down below if you just want to tell us what fine human beings we are. We appreciate the support uh, as we continue to move on. And we transition now to college football. Mark, yes, there is one college game uh, in the American Athletic Conference, Tulane and Charlotte. A couple weeks ago, uh, Charlotte gave up 51 points to Navy. It was a little misleading. It was very turnover assisted. But uh, then they blow the, you know, last week uh, they were leading Memphis. They blow the game late. Uh, so Charlotte, they've been competitive a little bit, but they just can't get out of their own way. Tulane quietly is one of the better group of five teams in, in the entire country. I think, you know, what the success that Army and Navy are having this year have overshadowed the green wave. But we think Tulane's right. going to be able to put up a lot of points. And we're willing to swallow a little bit of juice because uh, DraftKings has a good number that we can play for their team total. 
Yeah, again, I mean, I, I think when you get to a Tulane offense that plays fast, um, that likes to get up and down and score, they're going up against a Charlotte defense that's 110th in the country um, in total defense and has given up 35 touchdowns on the year. That all spells really well for the Green Wave here to put up a lot of points. We can get a total of 34 and a half, team total of 34 and a half for the Green Wave for them to go over it. Uh, as BP had just mentioned, this is also a two lane team that in four of their last five games has scored at least 40 points. So um, they are in the thick of things here 41, 45, 71 against UAB. My God, UAB, who's actually favored this week. Crazy. Only 24 against Rice, but 45 last week on the road at North Texas. And again, you know, it's, it seems crazy because their last three road games, 41, 71, and 45. So they seem to actually be better yeah. on the road um, to score than, than they are at home. So let's go over 34 and a half points here for Tulane tonight for our best bet. Yep, that is minus 135 at DraftKings. Bit of an alternate team total, but still, it's worth, obviously, Mark, we should say, it, we think it's worth paying a little extra juice to get under that key number of 35 uh, for the obvious reasons. Yeah. No, again, it, it's it's just kind of with it with it being an even five touchdowns, barring an idiot college kicker doesn't miss an extra point, 35 <laughs> is, is the better number for us to be at. Let us hope that Mark Zeno does not tweet kickers ug tonight ug. at Mark Zeno. Well, you can follow him. It would, be, it would be college kickers double ug. And then That's the right. That is right. That's right. Okay. Because they are uh, scared twice as bad as NFL kickers. Speaking of paid. following Mark, speaking of following Mark Zeno, you can get his picks at wt.buzz slash mz. Mark, what do you have going on on this fine Thursday? Uh, I'll have a, a sort of different piece of action. That came out weird. I'll have a different piece of action tonight on the Thursday night game <laughs> uh, for you guys. It's actually. Uh, a teaser in the NFL that starts uh, with a leg for tonight. So um, you can go get that at wt.buzz slash MZ. It'll be the only playoff for tonight. Uh, college card, guys, is, is getting pretty hefty. Um, we'll get it narrowed down and whittled down. But uh, we continue to run hot in both the NFL and college football. NFL, guys, uh, eight and four, last 12 plays dating back to the middle of October. So uh, we're locked in on the NFL, wt.buzz slash MZ. Much to the delight of Mark Zinno, I will not tout any records long-term that I may have because I've sucked the last five days, and I don't deserve to do that. There but, you go. Like I said, I now we, now I everybody's a, starting to like you again. There you go. Now I'm you're getting very, better. I'm a very likable guy here. Yeah, I'm a very likable like guy. guy. All right. Like WT.buzz slash BP. Bundesliga record? Tell the people your Bundesliga record. I don't think we've had a play in the Bundesliga yet this year. No. Although I was watching the uh, DFB Pokal yesterday afternoon, in the kidding. German right. Cup. I, I, there was some I, I, outstanding I things. It's over. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Nuremberg covered the plus one and a half against Six Offenheim. <laughs> I have a 4% uh, bet in the NFL. There you go. Subscribe. Uh, uh, like. Comment. Give us a thumbs down. (laughs) Why don't you tell us what you just think about the show? Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, I despise Aaron Boone. I hope Brian Cashman gets fired. And I never want to watch the Yankees play again. On that note, everybody. Have a good Thursday. Have a safe trick-or-treat, everybody.